We had uh, one teacher that was uh, brave heart, passionate against AI, who did a 180 flip. She was screaming academic integrity and we can't have AI in the, in the classroom. I think she realized that resistance was futile. Welcome back to another episode of the PowerCast. We're here in San Antonio, Texas. It's the 2025. I've got friend and veteran of the program, Superintendent Elizabeth Ford, Keith Connick. Keith, just happened to see you. You know, I wrangled you to, to talk shop a little bit. So how's it been going? Uh, it's been going fantastic. I feel like I'm a regular now. I, I know how to use all the equipment. So I'm uh, really excited to be back and uh, thank you for having me. And I, I'm hoping that the, the heat is treating you okay coming down from, from PA all the way to Texas. It's it, a little warm. <laughs> Last week it was warmer in Pittsburgh, actually. Oh, so wow. believe it or not, so 90 hit 92, 93 with uh, high humidity. So okay, well then, brutal. You, oh, then you're you're good to go. Then you feel right I was at home. I was acclimated. So. <laughs> you're right at home here. Okay, so checking in, what is going on in Elizabeth Forward? Top of mind, big things happening. Uh, we had a great new initiative this year. I, I charged all of my principals at each of my buildings uh, to find their own future ready themes and to develop them based on their needs their interest levels, okay. the principals, as well as the teachers. Uh, so what happened was we, uh, of course, our high school was, was, was definitely into figuring out what AI means for educators as well as students. So they made that their, their entire focus for the entire school year. Oh, wow. And uh, we're really able to become, you know, our experts, the district's experts on AI. Uh, they did so much research. They're helping us write policy, develop professional development, all these incredible things. Not, so the, the teachers in the in the school took this owns this process and is really leading the district with it. Yeah, we had uh, one teacher that was uh, brave heart, passionate against AI. Uh, she was screaming academic integrity, and we can't have AI in the in the classroom. Uh, who did a 180 flip? I think she realized that resistance was futile. Okay. Uh, so now she went all in. Uh, we have a local intermediate unit that supports uh, regional districts. They had a AI fellowship program where she worked with a lot of other like-minded folks and uh, went down to uh, South by Southwest education, had a lot of good opportunities to share data and come up with an action plan that was research-based. Uh, so she's really into it deep. She provided an entire uh, online course for our teachers so that we're training our teachers. Uh, they have a very well-developed course where they can go in and find out, personalize their own learning and find out what fits their needs. Because of this teacher, who's become so passionate about how this is going to affect our class. And, and can, do you, can you pinpoint when the, like the, the, the switch was flipped for, for the teacher of like, all right, like I can, not only am I going to embrace this, but I'm going to lead this. Yeah. Well, she teaches college courses uh, on the, you know, in the evening and online. And I think she just started to realize as she talked to her college level uh, students, as well as having conversations with educators, or I'm sorry, uh, folks out there in the workplace. Yes. What we find is, you know, I have a lawyer on my school board, I have a, uh, a PR professional, and they all start to talk about how they are using, a, how, how critical it is in their workplace. So as passionate as she is about teaching English uh, to kids, she's also wanting to make sure that those kids are prepared for the future that comes. So I think it was really always, as it is with everything she does, uh, it is based on her her need to prepare kids for the future, and that that drove her more than her act, act you know, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that fear of uh, academic integrity. But but that that's such a great thing that you come to that that realization and that passion through outsourcing some some information, right? You're going outside the network to get all right. How does this affecting workforce, and how are yes. my college kids using and. and and then saying, all right, well, my kids need to have this. Like, that's the best case scenario you could ask for when, when working with your, your staff. Now, I got to ask on the names. Did y'all name the college readiness themes at each campus? Did y'all, did y'all? We did add a little, uh, little branding ex you know, expertise. <laughs> can, can, can so we share did a little bit or uh, no? We didn't. Uh, we, it, wasn't, it wasn't incredible. What we did at our middle schools, we did immersive experiences. So they have been uh, really working with uh, Prism VR glasses oh, yeah, in math yeah. and math and science. Uh, so they advocated for that. We also have iPads at all of our buildings. So there's a lot of, I, uh, of, of AR opportunities within the iPad that we want to kind of maximize. They're also doing a lot of col college readiness. So they trying to find, or, I'm sorry, career readiness. Yep. That they tried to lump a lot of these things into this immersive experience, really kind of getting kids just immersed in what they're learning through those tools. So they've done that. And then we've done some low-tech opportunities too. One of our elementary schools uh, worked on you know, the 21st century skills, you know, the soft skills. Mm -hmm. We talk about those things at the high school so much, 
that, you know, by the time they're in high school, it's probably too late to teach them communication, collaboration, critical thinking, all those things. So what he's doing is he's implementing those soft skills at the elementary level and really kind of just being very systematic about introducing very slowly, but getting kids, as we talk about careers, talking about how those soft skills apply. You know, you, you brought up your board and, and their use and of seeing how AI affects their work. What's been their sense as, as the campuses have gone through this exploration and, and leading this charge? How are they taking it? What kind of questions seem to come up just with, with the school board? Uh, it, it is, again, it's an evolution, just sure. like that teacher that we had. There's a fear of it. Uh, there's a fear of the unknown. Uh, but then there's that realization that this is really going to help kids. There's some other factors that are in play here. We also recognize the teachers. If you ask a teacher what their, their greatest challenge is, it's always time. You know, we're starting to recognize all these tools within AI that will allow us to help teachers save some time. So I think our board recognizes, and again, it's coming, you know, whether it was the internet. It's whether, like a tidal wave. Exactly. Like we can't, we can't fight this thing. So we have to find ways to do it right. We start with the teachers and, and they're, they've been, they like the fact that we're becoming experts at it and that we're being systematic about the implementation. Making sure the teachers understand it first. Sure. That way we can help our kids understand effect, you know, effective and, and responsible use of it. If I can go down a little bit of a, a personal note, I, I think people are always curious, what do superintendents do during the summer, right? Because I think there's a, a, mis, a misconception, misperception <laughs> on just education in general. Like, oh, you get three months and the summer's <laughs> off. No, that's no. not really how it works. But no. just share a little bit, like what are some of the things that you, you engage in or, or some of the things that you like to do uh, when it's not so urgent? I think, you know, and I've, I've been asked this question since I stopped teaching back in, uh, I think it was 2006. Every year somebody asked me, you have summers off, right? <laughs> I do not have summers off. Which summer are you talking N about? Yeah, yeah, no summers off. Uh, you know, it's that time for planning and preparation. You know, it's that opportunity to hit the reset button. Mm -hmm. You know, we really spend a lot of time at the end of each school year, while it's top of mind, as you said, while it's top of mind, really looking at what things worked and what things didn't work to help plan our summer and really kind of, you know, just make better choices for the next year. We have that luxury in education. We get, we get a fresh start. That's right. Every, every end of August, we get a fresh start. So we spend the summertime planning for those things. It's also the time for new initiatives, uh, anything that we see as a, as a future or something that's bright uh, to really kind of, dig, you know, just dive deeper into it. Sure. The issue is this. We are, we are scattered and pulled in a million directions during the school year. But one thing about the summer that I appreciate the most is we have the opportunity to focus on a fewer things uh, more deeply, which is something we don't have that luxury of most of the year. So when you're at a conference, and, and we'll, obviously ISTE is a little bit different. It's not like a superintendent leadership conference, mm -hmm. but it's more on the, the tech side of the house. What are some of the things that you look for, some of the things that pique your interest kind of coming into San Antonio uh, for ISTE 25? Well, I look for great ideas to share with my director of digital, digital teaching and learning. So she always gets nervous when we come to these events that we're going to come back with big ideas. <laughs> she, uh, so she sees it as work. She like, does. What, what, what Every, am I going to get to have to do as a result of this conference? Everybody's nervous when we come back from a conference because <laughs> there's a million things to do. Uh, you know, I, I have a really incredible passion. I have a student, a daughter with, with, with special needs who, who had some challenges. Uh, so I really am looking forward to uh, ways that we could use ed tech tools, AI, yes. all those things to help reach the needs of those kids. So that's that's a little bit of a passion project that I think people always see with me. Uh, so when I bring it back, ways to reach those kids that, that are more vulnerable, uh, that can really be helped by some of this incredible technology. So, so you're uh, looking for that universal design, right? It, it, mm -hmm. it serves everybody, starting on the margins and moving exactly. in. Serve. I love that. Yeah, and you know, we've been personalized learning or doing our best to personalize learning for the last, you know, 10 or 12 years. Right. Uh, so we're always looking for ways to expand that. Well, awesome. Okay, well, hey, I appreciate you letting me wrangle you Everything. in for, for 10 minutes just to update this. I love the way that your, your your staff and particularly your your teacher, do you want to shout out her name? Will you be, or is it? I will, I, it's uh, Dr. Jennifer Spiegel. I will shout out her name from the mountaintop. She has been an incredible advocate uh, at our district, uh, a resource for us. I'm just so proud of her and uh, just, just really, really happy with her and, and how much she's embraced it. That, so. that, that's awesome. And kudos to you, uh, Jennifer, for, for jumping on and, and taking and owning it and leading it um, for Elizabeth yeah. Ford. So great job. and. 
Good to see you. And yeah. um, we'll be talking more. Since, since now that you're a veteran, you have to agree. I, there's like a, a cadence where you have to reappear so often. So, Or at least got to go to a, a Steelers game something. Exactly. We can start the Keith Connick series maybe <laughs> of the PowerCast. So, uh, uh, anytime you need me, I, I love to talk. I, I love to sit down and talk about education, and I love these opportunities. So thanks. Excellent. Appreciate. You heard it here on the PowerCast, ESD 2025, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.